When you hold your ATM card, what is in your ATM? There is something that your ATM is holding. The blood of anything carries the life of that thing. Not just the blood of Jesus. The blood of a goat carries the life of the goat. The blood of a human being is where his human life flows. There is a great relationship between the blood and the life. Blood represents life. This is the first information I want us to note. Blood represents life. And this life that is in the blood is in levels. Let us open our Bible to Le Leviticus 17, 11. They are out there, say amen. Is anybody there to read for us? Yes. Leviticus 17, 11. For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that make it an assurance for the soul. Amen. The blood make it the atonement for the soul. Whose blood? Blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. The second thing that I would like us to note about the blood from Scripture is that the blood has always been used as a ransom. I know some of you will be wondering, uh, how? What is a ransom? Let's begin from there. A ransom, ransom, is the payment you make to release someone in captivity. When a person is kidnapped, unfortunately, as it happens in Nigeria these days, those terrorists would demand that money, that purchasing power that you give to them to release the captive is also found in the blood. The blood is the currency in the realm of the spirits. The same way Naira, dollars, pounds are used as an instrument of purchase in the physical realm for settlement. That we can use the blood like we use money to buy things is called redemption. How many of us knows that Christ is our redeemer? He paid that ultimate price. To redeem means to compensate for a default. The idea of redemption talks of compensation. A system of compensation for a default. To redeem also means to regain session. So the blood has the purchasing power of a pizza. It can bring an end to contention. That we can use the blood like money to buy things is what we can ultimately call redemption. To redeem, in other words, to compensate for a default, for a default. 
The idea of redemption talks of compensation. The idea of compensation for a default. When men fell, they willingly gave their authority, their lives, and submitted themselves to the influence of Satan. Then Satan became the god of their world. Even the prince of the powers of the earth, the spirit that works with the son of disobedience. Many of our precious forefathers, in ignorance, they legitimately invited Satan into their lives through the mediums, priests, whatever it is that they bow down and worship to. They even entered into covenants because what? They were just seeking assistance from the realm of the spirits. Knowing that the body without the spirit is dead. And because they did not know the one true God, Satan, masquerading as God, came and deceived them, and most of them willingly handed themselves over to Satan. Psalm 51 55 says, Behold, I was shaping in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Brethren, how many of us here are aware that the blood in you is older than you? Way older. The blood was already there before we arrived. Without the blood, we wouldn't have been born. By one man's sin, and then through the means of reproduction by blood, the sin nature continued to multiply. Have you ever wondered why no man played the fatherly role of Jesus? He only boasts himself, played that role. If a man participated in the birth of Jesus, he would have been born as sin immediately. So he came as the sinless one. That is the qualification that the kind of appeasal that the yokes and the crosses and the covenant demands. Based on the system of heaven, it would require blood that didn't come from a human male and that is impossible based on the laws of, of reproduction. So the Holy Ghost played that fatherly role. And Jesus, although with a human body, but not the blood of a mortal man. I'm trying to build a case so that you can understand how precious this blood of Jesus is. When Jesus gave us his blood, because his blood is a representation of his life, when he gave that life up for us, he was sinless and not deserving of judgment. Watch this wisdom. Even though it was God who allowed Jesus to die, Jesus made sure Satan played a role in his death because somebody was going to be blamed. 
Satan was happy doing what he was doing to kill Jesus, although he didn't participate in it physically. He was soiling and making the hearts of men turn against Jesus. According to the law of the scriptures, when you kill an innocent man, the blood of that man starts crying. And when he cries, God will hear. Whatever the blood says, shall be done. Let's take a look at Cain and Abel. Abel was dead, but his blood cried. Now, when Satan had done all he wanted to do, the blood of Jesus cried. And instead of it crying to say, avenge me, he said no. As a reward for killing an innocent man, release the one who is Brethren, the blood has got a voice. And the voice of the blood is the word. The word is identified by the voice of the blood. The voice of the blood is the Holy Ghost. For those that were asking earlier, the Holy Ghost, the blood, is that clear now? Sister Jemila, you were asking earlier. You have a question? Exactly. The blood brings life. The blood is life. And it brings life to the world and quickens it. Let us turn our Bible to the book of Hebrews 12, 24. You all there say amen. amen. Now, before we read from that scripture, remember the last service we had, we talked about rekindling our confidence with God. As believers, it is important for us to understand that sacrifice that was made for me and for you. That special token, the blood of Jesus, that was given to you and I, Free. In the process of rekindling our covenant with God, we are looking at taking a different approach towards this Christian life that we want to live. And I assure you, one of it is understanding the word of God through and through. Let us read Hebrews 12, 24. And to Jesus, of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling, that speaketh better things than that of Abel. The Bible says it speaketh better things than that of Abel. The blood has a voice. I am proud and happy to say the blood spoke better things and redeemed me and redeemed you. And that is why we are here today. Now, every time Satan stands before you and claims that it is true that your fathers worship idols. And based on that ground that they were worshiping idols, you will not experience breakthrough. You will experience barrenness. Tell Satan 
you are right. But if I am not the only one who is going to fight this case, but I have what? An advocate. And who is this advocate, brethren? The book of 1 John 2, 1 says, My little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Talking about the blood being a token. Imagine you were owing somebody money. Let's say you were owing somebody like 500,000 naira. And anytime you see that person, you dodge, you hide, you find a way to disappear. But then all of a sudden, Dan Gote now gives you 100 million naira. You'll be walking with your head, with your head held up high. You won't hide, you won't run. You'll be very confident walking on the streets. If it costs too much, you go even dash on one million naira. Why? Because you have that confidence of what Dan Gote has given you. Now, how much more the blood of Jesus Christ? Brethren, the blood of Jesus is a token that breaks every hold of covenants and ordinances that speak against you, that speak against me. Remind Satan that if it was just, when I say just, not the typical just using a statement, legal terms, if it was just, justifiable that is, for the guiltless to become guilty, then it is just for the guilty to become guiltless. Why? Because we have the token. That special, dignified blood of Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus, it speaks mercy for the saints. It speaks of release for the saints. But it also speaks judgment for Satan and his cohorts. The blood of Jesus is even an overpayment. It's an overpayment. Because whatever it is that gave the devil that access over you or anyone else, every blood came by earthly stance, whether animal, men, but the blood of Jesus Christ is not of earthly origin. So there is no bill, there is no base that this blood of Jesus cannot speak. Amen. If something has to die so that you and I can live physically, that is, you kill ram, you kill goats, you kill chicken, turkey, you kill fish, so that you can consume it and give yourself sustenance so that you, so that me, we can live physically. How much more is it that Jesus had to die so that we can live eternally? Have you ever sat down and wondered what an ultimate sacrifice this is? A sacrifice that gives you access to eternal life. It's by the substance of his death that I am speaking and everyone here, both online and seated here today, is in church today and alive. 
Let us open our Bibles to Exodus 12, 13. Praise the Lord. Exodus 12, 13. You are there? Say amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I read. And the blood shall be for a token. Upon the houses where ye are, and when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you. And when I smite, when I smite the land of Egypt, I'll read it again. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon, upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. Looking at the Old Testament, God said, For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. And the blood shall be unto you a token. Upon the house where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not come upon you to destroy you when I smite Egypt. Brethren, this was the blood of an animal that they kept on their doorstep. If you read the token, you would see where Abraham made mention to Webster. He said, according to Webster, a token is a sign of a price that has been paid. He says, a token is a sign of a price that has been paid. Now, when we claim that we believe God, that is when God identify our faith by giving us the token of the blood of Jesus. That blood that finished the work for us at Calvary. Then our life is in Jesus and the life of his sacrifice is in us. The blood of Jesus is the basis for the ministry of mercy. When Satan, who is the accuser of the brethren, comes to accuse you of anything and make demands that was agreed by covenants of the forefathers and witchcrafts. When you invoke the blood, you disappear in the cell of the spirit from that place. And now Jesus is the one who is now standing there for you. Satan will say, ah, no, it's not you. I, I'm talking to I'm talking to brother XYZ. <laughs> Jesus will let him know that the person has invited me. So what is your accusation against? Satan will remember that there is no accusation he can bring before Jesus.
Remember when Jesus stood before Pontius Pilate? He brought different accusations. But nothing could stand. Brethren, if you do not understand the power of the blood, there can be no redemption. Somebody should read Ephesians 1 7. Ephesians 1 7. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin, according to the riches of his grace. Amen. Amen. In whom we have redemption through his blood, through that token, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. We have the mic yet. My question is from the portion we read in Exodus chapter 4. Exodus 12. Yes. So in that time, the blood was put, um, for what I read in the tomb, the blood had to be put on it. So when the angel is passing, they will see the blood, blood put on this blade, it will pass over. You didn't put the blood in the pockets or a to not, we are not that, it had to be on. So now, so the blood is still relevant, but we are not necessarily putting it on display by applying it on the doorpost. So, my question is how are we putting the blood on this? Display? How can I, or how am I putting the blood on display in Africa? So, Sister Chidima's question is, how do we as believers put the blood on display today? I'll put it very simply. There is a very popular song that goes, It's not by might, it's not by mind, it's not by power, it's not by power, but but by the Spirit. I don't know about you. When I get into my car in the morning and I'm going to walk, I pray that God should take me to work and bring me back safe. Why do you think I pray? Why do you pray before leaving your house? Why do you thank God when you get home safe? Is it by your might? Is it by your power? It's because you are believing in an upper calling. You are believing in that sacrifice that was paid for you and I on that cross of Calvary to stand for you and to stand for me. Now, if you look at the Old Testament, when they kept the blood on display on their doorposts, did they have Christ then? Do we have Christ now? Yes. Amen. Amen. We have Christ as of today. And we tap into his anointing by prayer, by belief, and by faith that as Christians, we have a limited access to Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. So it is not a matter of having it on physical display before it will stand for you. You are connected to it spiritually by believing that that sacrifice was paid for you. That sacrifice was paid for me. And as such, I have unlimited access to it. And that by that God, every knee shall bow.
You believe in Jesus Christ. You believe he's your savior. You believe he's your redeemer. You believe that he died for you on that cross. A friend of mine once said something. He said, I was telling him that I know you did something, and I said, guy, you better de- confess your sins to God. He said, forget that thing. Christ has already died for me on, on the cross of Calvary, that those ones have been forbidden. I looked at him. It was ignorance. It is one thing to say Christ died for you. It's another thing for you to accept that he died for you. How many of us here believe and accept that Christ died for us? How many of you here think that as the beloved children of God, he will grant you sleep when you want to sleep at night and wake you up the next day in the morning? He feeds you. He clothes you. When you, when you have issues, your child is sick, you are worried, you turn to him in prayer. He comforts you. He heals you. He provides for you. If you did not believe that Christ died for you, paid that ultimate sacrifice for you, do not have access to that redemption. Your faith and your belief is what gives you that access to Jesus Christ. See, today the Muslims don't believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Yet, they acknowledge that he existed, but they do not agree. They know he existed, but they do not agree. Can the blood stand for them? Will it count for them? No. Will it fight for them? No. But those of us here who know, believe, and understand that the blood was given to us as a token, will it fight for us? Will it guide us? Will it protect us? So I don't know if this broadly answers your question, Sister Chidim. Okay, thank you. I have a job for one more question. So I'm applying the blood today, giving and by accepting. So as part of that display or action of the blood should be. Um, where is the place of the fruits of the spirit? Because the blood redeemed us onto something, right? So where is the place of the fruits as well as the gifts of the spirits as part of um, sort of manifesting that are if I accepted this okay. So, the question is, where is the gift and the fruit of the Spirit as part of the fact that you have accepted this blood? Did I get that question right? Okay. It's a very broad answer. It's a very, very broad answer. And um, it would then mean that I digress into a different topic entirely to start giving an answer to that question. I, I'm sure many of us here have, has, um, were in church when Daddy taught us about the fruits of the spirits. And he also taught us about the gifts of the spirit. And I remember vividly. That in his teaching, he did mention that you have to yearn for those gifts. Amen? Yeah. You have to yearn for those gifts. So maybe what we can further clarify on this question, let it be done to the next sermon book that we are going to read which is going to tally with the question that you are asking. Because part of the process of us rekindling our covenant with God is for us to understand the world and not just say, oh, this is... The... Because now I can confidently say, 2024, I have read one sermon book. For those people who won, was their only count in 2023. 
they can confidently say now they have beaten, they have read one sermon book. And this same, this coming Sunday, we are going to read another one. So that by the time we do two every month, even if it's just two, by the end of the year, you will, you will say you have read what? 24. So we're going to make it a build up into the next sermon where we are going to read and understand the connection between accepting the blood and how it then connects us to the gift and the fruits of the Spirit. So, brethren, like I said, I do not want to digress into a different topic entirely, but I want us to understand what this token, what this precious blood of God that was shed on the cross of Calvary stands for, for me, stands for, for you, for all of us as Christians and as believers of the word of God. There's a very big and vast difference between accepting the word of God and knowing about the word of God. As Christians, we should not only understand the word, but we should accept it and we should abide by it. That acceptance grants us that total access to the token. Because of the token, we can stand firmly and say, the moment we invoke the blood and Jesus shows up, there is absolutely no accusation against you. And Satan is not happy that you know this. Because the blood does not speak empty. When the blood says, you are not guilty, there is a system that that is the forces of heaven. That what the blood has said about you remains true over your life. The Bible says, whatsoever you declare on earth shall be what? So, brethren, I hope with us heading back, having read, and for those that didn't, that said, I read small. Those that said, I read a little, please. Go back and read it. Go back and finish it. You see this word of God. It is food for your soul. The Bible says man must not live by bread alone, but by the word of God. Every word, every word. You want to renew your covenant with God this 2024. Draw closer to God. Right, he was giving a testimony this morning, and I listened to it. And the truth is, hell, we all have that struggle. It's a Sunday morning, you've woken up. Get up from bed now, Ashley. You first of all, maybe you are thinking about, oh, I have school fees to pay, I have rents to pay, or you carry your phone, you are pressing your phone. Before you know, one hour, two hours, three hours has passed, you are still on bed, but you have to go and serve your later. We need to cultivate that habit of wanting to be happy in the presence of God. We need to cultivate that habit that as we are going before our God, we are not living the same. Mr. Adar, I missed the testimony, but I understood it was about BP. And Brother David, I still feel you kept it in mind. BP is a very serious issue. I know people that are on medications permanently for BP issues. I know some people who were just working, they slumped, and that was it. But I want to believe that we will cast our cares upon the Lord, and He will always stand for us in Jesus' name. So, brethren, like we did last week, we will be sharing the next sermon book that we are going to read. And please, this time around, let us take time to read it through and through. When we then gather in church to worship our God, when we have more understanding, more clarification on certain aspects and areas of that book that has been read, so that it will then be that food that will bless us. So as you do so, may you remain blessed in Jesus' name. That thing may be the evidence that the price has been paid for us all in Jesus' name. Let us quickly take the 226.
in 226, my faith has found a resting place. This song speaks when I when I when I sing the song, it reminds me of what we just listened to today, the token. Are we all there? I trust that I I I I Oh. 
I need no other arguments. I need no other No other me. For me. And that's I have Amen and amen. The chorus of that song speaks very deep meaning to me. I need no other argument. I need no other plea. It is enough that Jesus died and that he not just died for anyone, but for me. Brethren, let us pray. Our dear God, we give you all the glory, all the honor. We bless and adore your holy name. We thank you, Lord, for giving us your word today, that word that is a very good bestowment upon our very souls. We ask and pray that our Lord and our God that you draw us mm. nearer. Make us to hearken unto your word and understand your word true and true. We ask and pray that, Lord, you put the spirit of willfulness to learn and abide by your word in us. We pray and ask that, Lord, as we continue to delve deeper into your word, into the understanding of your word. We pray that, Lord, let it be a blessing upon our life in the name of Jesus. Papa, we cover each and everybody, both online and in this assembly today with the blood of Jesus. We sanctify and purify their hearts with the blood of Jesus. We pray that, Lord, that as they are going into this new week, we cover them from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet with the blood of Jesus. Lord, they are going out and they are coming in as blessed. I bless the work of their hands. They will receive favor in their place of work. They will receive favor in the place of their businesses. As they go out this week, they will come back safe. Lord, no weapon or arrow form against the church. Cover their hearts with the blood of Jesus. We ask and pray that Lord keep them, guide them, and direct them. Our Lord and our God, we tap into that blood, that special token that you give up to us. This day, Lord, as we have gotten deeper understanding of what that blood stands for. Let that blood fight our battles in Jesus. Heavenly Father, we say thank you. We say blessed and hallowed be your holy name. For in Jesus' name we pray. Brethren, remember that the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. I pray and ask that as you continue to abide by the word of God, may he continue to bless and keep you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let us receive the priestly blessing. The Lord will bless and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you Amen. and be gracious unto you. Amen. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us share the grace. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord is the Lord. And the of the Holy Spirit. The Lord is the Lord. The Lord is the Lord. Amen. God bless you all in Jesus' name. Amen.